I grew up on the farm, and I always loved wildlife, wildlife area, just regular swamp. I love it. I was born four or five miles north of Seeds, Florida. Having heard the stories of, of, of his early childhood, I think he would probably say he grew up in a typical way as a, the son of a farmer in a small farm back in the early 30s and 20s. We started work about sun up every morning. We'd usually knock off when the mail train blew for noon, lunch. He always told me even throughout my life we'd be out in the field working and we're some four or five miles from the train track and when the old train blows, I have seen him stop and tell me, he said, you know, he said it was such an emphasis in my life as a young man that he said every time I hear that train blow like that, he said I have this urging or uh, urge to just get up and leave and go get on it. You know, in, in war, most of the time, you're just shooting. You're just shooting out there. I think it said one point something million for every time a man was actually killed by a bullet it was one point something million bullet shot. But this situation was not like that. This situation was face to face. We were the head of the landing troops when we went ashore. Each man carried his assault pack. He carried his medicine. If he smoked, he had his cigarette. The going on the beach was tough. The Japanese had had time to, to lay out the coordinates of the island. They had it all blocked off into blocks. They had all their artillery and gunfire. The machine guns from the hillsides and what have you were crisscrossed, the same as they were on Normandy with the Germans. The first group had one kill. The second group was all killed except two men. And if they hadn't run, they'd, they'd have been killed. Marines were bringing in artillery. As soon as those guns rolled in, the spotter called fire in on them, so they'd fire a barrage of mortars. I was close enough out here, and every word they spoke amongst them. Took Kenny Ann Island, then we went to work around the clock. They built the airstrip, uh, the B-29 super fortresses were flying to the mainland of Japan. They were loaded so heavy with bombs and gasoline to make that long trip. He said, I mean, they would stay out there, look like they wouldn't gain 30 feet of altitude for miles. They flew over there with little boy and fat man that ended the war. In his day of uh, farming, he was always on the cutting edge. He received the uh, Progressive Farmer Award for uh, Most Progressive Farm Family. We found out that putting a, uh, an organic type compost under the uh, cantaloupes would make them mature one week early. And that's shaving the, the frost days as close as you can because the frost would, would take you out as far as it'll, it'll kill your crop. Mom grew up probably no more than a mile and a half or two miles from my dad, but she was younger. We lived near each other, you know, like a lot of country people do. And we visited each other quite often. What I love about him is the bond between him and his wife, Miss Hazel. He just has such a love for her. I think he's, they've been married 65 years. And he loves to tell me he's, they've never had a fight. The first thing you want to do is to learn to love and eat the, the things that your wife likes. You'll be cooking yourself if you don't. <laughs> Y'all have humbled me. You guys have. I, I don't call myself no show-off or nothing. Every 
Everything I've earned, I paid for it. But them old big, big ass.